Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we've got something real special. We're checking out the Tegler Variable Tube Compressor. Now this is a mastering compressor. This isn't meant to be a smasher or super aggressive like the M House was that we did a couple weeks ago. This is designed to make your mixes sound sweeter. Uh, you can use it on individual tracks and we are gonna try it on a couple things here. This thing's designed to be used on full mixes and all the knobs are detented for easy recall so you can just write down what you had things set to and you can get your settings back exactly. And again, you'll find that on any kind of mastering grade equipment. You know, they're either stepped or detented for easy recall because you need to be able to repeat the same settings consistently from time to time uh, and not have to worry about, well, is it almost, especially when you're working with a system like this, which is a dual mono or stereo pair. We've got a very convenient link button here, and I believe that's just for the attack and release times. The input gain and output, you will have to still match as as I've already found out the hard way. But once you get it set up, it is uh, pretty damn simple to use. Now, the first thing I was using it here was on my mix for As the Empire Falls, which is gonna be in that mixing metal with waves lesson I've got coming out if it isn't out already. Anyway, um, if we just wanna punch it in another mix here, just turn it on. And that's just butter smooth. It's not really doing too much except just making the mix sound a little bit nicer. I find the guitars and the drums just kind of find their own place in the mix a little bit easier with this in the mix as opposed to say a software mix bus compressor. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna show you guys what happens when we start stomping down with the attack. And we're gonna slow the release down just a little bit and we're gonna speed up the attack and we're gonna watch what happens here. Looks like we're getting about 7 dBs of compression there. And when you're doing a full mix, especially bus compression, you want something to be you know, transparent and just kind of sweeten things up a little bit and maybe not make things quite as gritty. It says in the manual you can get about 6 dBs of compression before you're gonna hear any kind of pumping and it's definitely starting to pump there. Now one thing you gotta keep in mind here is that the input and output are not the exact same. It's kind of a mirror, not a duplicate. So the input and output are on the outside. The attack and release are on the inside. Make sure you keep that in mind when you start playing with this because I was like, why the hell is one channel off? Is this thing broken or something? No, no, I just got to read the front panel a little bit more closely. Anyway, uh, so we're going to try backing off the attack here and show you guys exactly what's ha what happens to the mix. Actually, this is a great spot to put the link button to the test. I'm going to leave the attack down on one side and I'm going to play, I'm going to roll one back. I'm going to keep it linked and unlinked and show you exactly what's going on. So yeah, that's definitely doing something with the attack on both channels. It's been my experience though when messing with analog compressors, just set everything at the middle and usually it's gonna sound pretty good. That should always be your jumping off point, just kind of set everything to five and see what happens. In this case, I've got the rear insert going and I'm just uh, checking my levels in and out, making sure we're not peaking. But again, we have to level match to left and right here. The link button only seems to be for the attack and release. So we'll step down this a little bit harder. Get a little bit more input going. Yep, hang on. That's really adding something now.
Get get a little harsh on those on the extreme bottom end on the kick drums though. So I think we're gonna have to watch our attack and release times here just a little more. Must also add there is a sidechain detector there so we can compress the full mix or the compressor won't kick in until 120 hertz or 60 hertz. So that's going to allow low frequencies to come in and not trigger the compressor so it won't stomp down quite as hard. And in this case, we've got a lot of subsonics going on with the kick drum. So yeah, it might be a good idea to play around with that a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try hitting the compressor a little bit harder until I start to hear it artifacting and then I'm going to back it off just a tiny bit. Let's see what happens. Wow, that's really adding something nice now. You listen back and forth. Wow, that's not too bad. All right, so next up, I've got that track, Like a Fujin, that we did a couple months back with Trey Watson and Eric Arco, and we're going to throw this up on the mix bus as well. What I want to do is I want to show the difference on this from using a software bus compressor to using the Tagler. So we've got the original mix here, and we've got the Tagler mix here, which I've got going out via reinsert in real time. And this is what I absolutely love about Re Reaper, is I can send stuff out to hardware and right back in and almost use it like as it were a plugin or something like that. And that, I think that's really cool. Okay, so here's the original mix. And here's the Tagler. Wow. Let's make sure I, I'm not even peeking out here at all. Okay, there we had a spike. One. Let's punch this out. Good grief. So, in case I didn't mention already, the Veritube compressor works much on the same principle that the uh, original Fairchild 670 compressor worked on. And that's one of the most sought-after pieces of vintage tube audio gear ever. They're super rare, and they're super expensive. And apparently, the they don't make the tubes for them anymore. And, you know, there's just there's a lot of difficult things involved with owning a Fairchild, much less getting your hands on one. So uh, the fact that Tegler have come along and kind of taken the best bits out of the Fairchild and put it into something reasonably affordable in comparison, I think it's just super cool. Now on mixes, I mean like, holy crap, what a difference. Once again, original mix. And using the Tegler. You know, we got about maybe 4 dBs of compression going on that mix. Maybe we can squeeze it down a little bit harder, but we don't have to push it very much. Like I, said, I got the attack at medium. Uh, the release is pretty quick, and I don't know what the heck it's doing, but it's just making the guitars and drums work together that much more, and I'm absolutely loving the sound of it. 
Wow, I can't believe I haven't used this on a mix already. Let's, t- let's take it up with the chorus here. Let's see what happens here. Well, again, original mix. And let's pull up, let's pull up the Tegler mix. Good grief. That's just night and day. It's also a whole lot louder. And like I said, I can't believe I'm not actually spiking the meters here. We're just we're just kissing it. We're just about in the danger zone there. We're at like 0.1. So maybe if I took that down like a little bit, like half a decibel or something. Not even, maybe 0.3 dBs. Just give us a little more headroom. And check back against the original. That's that's insane. Wow. And it's again, it's not doing much. It's just you know keeping it quite simple. Now, the one thing I did want to check here uh, was drum room. See how this works. And let's check out a stereo room here. What do I got here? Do I got set up here? Yes, I do. Now, um, I don't know how well this is going to smash a mix. Okay, that's off. Let's go for broke here. Let's go fast attack, fast release, and crank it up and see what happens. Because honestly, I've got no idea. Yeah, this is the track we used on the Cab Club demo there a couple weeks ago. And uh, damn, you know what? That's actually pretty awesome. You know, compared to, say, the studio, com- or compared to the software compressor I was using. That's using the UA software distressor, which I got to say is pretty good. That's like set to the nuke settings. But we put on the Tagler, and this is what we get. Once again. What happens if we roll off the attack? Holy smokes. Slow that attack down a little more. Yeah, I like I like it uh, a little bit more slammy like that. That's pretty damn amazing. That's just a completely different brand of compression there. So software distressor. Very nice. Now, don't get me wrong. The I find the UA distressor probably one of the best software distressor emulations I've ever heard. Now, this is coming from a guy who's used a hardware distressor for years on end. But wow, the Tagler is just like... That's distressor. That's really got something to it. Holy smokes. Wow. Okay, well, call me impressed. That's the Tegler Veritube Compressor. I got to say, I'm completely blown away with both this. Now, my very good friend Warren Hewitt over at Produce Like a Pro has been ranting and raving about the Tegler stuff for a very long time, saying it's super high quality and whatnot. He's really not kidding. I mean, damn. Oh, oh, and, um, you know... And full disclosure here, they said, hey, yeah, use it on a few videos. You can keep it. I've I've been wanting to try it out since, like, last October. It's just been sitting here saying, play with me.
me, play with me. And I haven't had a chance to get to it yet. And I'm kind of kicking myself for not getting to it anytime sooner. This is kind of like feels like a bit of a missing link in terms of like stuff I've needed to throw on my mixes. I'm just can call me just completely blown away. Now, price wise, the very tube compressor isn't the most expensive tube compressor out there, not by a long shot, but it's still 1700 us or about 1500 euros. You can find them at Toman. Um, Here's the really great thing. If you really want to try one out, Tegler will send you one to try out for two weeks with absolutely no commitment, just to show how you can see how you like it. And I got to say, I think if they had given this to me for just said for two weeks, play with it. And you know, I probably wouldn't have sent it back. I would have probably dropped the cash on it because that's a whole lot of wow going on there. I mean, it's just twist a few knobs and your mixes sound better. That's uh that is, this is one of those kind of things that would make you look like a genius in front of your clients because this thing just totally kicks ass. Holy crap. I am absolutely blown away by this. This is probably going to be one of my absolute favorite pieces of gear for the next 10 years. And I think uh, this is going to be a welcome addition to the rack and it deserves a home right next to my distressor. Tegler, I'd just like to say thank you so much to everybody at Tegler for making this available to me. I can't wait to use it on more mixes in the future. It does definitely needs to be used more like, holy crap, I can't believe I've had it this long and haven't used it yet because it's that good. Anyway, I'm going to put some links in the description below for Tegler Audio and some links where you can find it and whatnot. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to check them out. And yeah, if you want to get your hands on one, ask them about borrowing one for a couple weeks so you can see for yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching the show. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, get out there and make some metal, motherfuckers. Yeah.